Bible prophecy warns of a flesh man coming on the scene with supernatural powers that he got from the devil. Well, he will use these supernatural powers to do miracles in the sight of men, and these miracles he will use to fool the entire world into thinking that he's God or Jesus Christ or try to replace Christ. Tell you about the mark of the beast and the antichrist real quick the antichrist is going to be somebody that's going to be a hundred times worse than hitler but when he starts out he's going to be a beautiful speaker uh mesmerizing in appearance and a man of peace that's how he's going to present himself and he's going to unite all the world's religions under him and he's going to pretty much form a religious dictatorship that will kill anybody that doesn't bow down to him first on his list will be to kill Christians to take the place of Jesus Christ and to claim that he's God he's gonna sit in the temple over in Jerusalem and pretend to be God well his system is gonna be financial economic and all that and you won't be you won't be able to be a part of that system unless you take an oath to him and reject all your former faiths like Christianity and whatever else you believed in. And if you ain't willing to do that, they'll threaten your family and threaten your kids and threaten your mom to kill them first in front of you and then kill you. But if you're a Christian, you know that you got to stick with Christ no matter what, even if it means death because Christ died for us. He gave us his all, you know, just so we can have a chance to live with him in heaven. So this uh, Mark of the Beast and Antichrist, it has teeth behind it because in 1991, these laws were introduced to the U.S. from the Sanhedrin called the Noahide Laws, and there's seven of them. But as you go deeper into these Noahide Laws, one of the tenets is, if you will not renounce Jesus Christ, the penalty is death because worshiping Jesus Christ to the Sanhedrin and the Noahide Laws is considered idolatry. And so they'll murder you. These, the Sanhedrin is the same guys back in the Bible days that conspired against and murdered Jesus because they were jealous of Jesus because Jesus was like an innovator. You know, where they was all about that religion and exploiting people. But Jesus Christ came with the true faith, which was a family, family based doctrine where you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ is the Son. He's our Redeemer. He's our Healer. He's our everything. And He came to earth from heaven to show us how to do it and the difference between him and all these other false gods is Jesus Christ is the only God that said he wasn't too good to die for his servants so he left his throne in heaven and came down here and died took our penalty on the cross because we were sinners and we were worthy of whatever punishment we were supposed to get by the bad things we've done but Christ said you know what father I'll take their punishment for them and if they follow me I'll, I'll lead them to heaven so leave them in my hands so Christ is like our lawyer our defender our everything because Satan all he does is accuse us of all, accuse us of all the bad things we do he's like hey God look at what they're doing they're just like me so I get to take them into hell but Christ said hey if they follow me my blood is on them so they're mine and I can take them with me to heaven so that's what the deal is with Jesus Christ and this mark of the beast and Antichrist system this Antichrist figure he's gonna have supernatural powers and all that he's gonna have everything that he needs from the devil to fool mankind but just know if you're a Christian you can't go along with him just to save your life or to eat or anything like that because if you do God will reject you and you won't be able to go to heaven so you have to hold on no matter how hard it gets so it's letting everybody know about the Antichrist and the beast system alright guys make the right choice God bless you and I love you going to read from the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things said he that is holy he that is true he that hath the key of David he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth I know thy works behold I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not but do lie behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience 
I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God and I will write upon him my new name he that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches okay I'm reading from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and this relates to the Antichrist topic now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivable and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. And that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Wherefore, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded at the goal line. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at their own 24. First down, Mayfield. Flush to his right. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. To throw, Mayfield. That's caught out left by Perriman. Rashad Perriman off to the races. And all the way in. 
and touchdown, Cleveland. Brashad Perriman, 76 yards. And the Browns move back within a couple of the lead. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. The quick slant caught. And he is not going to make it to the end zone. The defense stands tall, and they're going to hold on to their 8-6 lead. So the lead shaved to two now as the kickoff is away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. And that last touchdown drive they had very balanced. How key is that balance? It's huge because most of the time when we talk about balance is run, pass, almost 50-50. But most of the times when you talk to offensive coaches, they say balance is we do what we want when we want to. <laughs> and that means that they're ahead of the defense, keeping them on their heels. Yeah, they imposed their will on that last drive. They start on the ground with Elliott. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. A gain of three, second down. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Three down, three down. Here we go. Right, Strike that On second down, Elliott. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. It's a five-yard game, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. They'll try and run for it with Elliott. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Fred, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pick up because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Larry Ogunjobi there to make the tackle. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. A first down carry by Elliott. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. It's the pro bowler Jamie Collins that makes the stop. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. They'll try to throw now. Prescott forced out to his left. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. The Cowboys on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. Here it's third and three. The give is to Elliott. 
And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. They keep on the ground with Elliott. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Prescott now on second down. He finds Austin complete and brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. sack now of the afternoon. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Pick up there, 19 yards, and they're set up better for third. On third and one, here's Prescott. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. And forthcoming, a field goal try for the Cowboys. And his kick is good. And the lead now five, 11 to six. Well, that will go down as a 15 play drive and it results in three points. So some disappointment. It's funny, we had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. And what did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick, right? An extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. He's got a man wide open. It's Landry. And all the way down. 35. 
We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And fights through one man. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Out come the Cowboys now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. First down, Prescott. And an alley to run. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. continues they're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead give it to the backs play a little bit of keep away don't you think and that's probably a good philosophy at this point going to make that defense stand up and stop them they keep it with smith on first down and this defense not giving him anything there maybe a yard up to the 36. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Second down throw for Prescott. Wide open, Amari Cooper. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 15 yards through the air and a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And now with the play clock winding down, Jason Garrett opts to take a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Go, go, get out there, get out there. 
Now Prescott. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Miles Garrett able to disrupt yet another pass play, his third sack of the afternoon. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. one down to about the 17. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Early down stuffs will put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Back now in Arlington. It's the Cowboys with a the football. They'll be looking to tack onto their lead as we get set for the fourth. Inside the 10 to the 7. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Smith trying to run for it. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. They come out with one back and three tight ends. He'll get it up the middle. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker, this has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. So Dak will bring the Cowboys up to go for the two-point try. They'll let Elliott try and run it in. And he got it on the touchdown run, but he won't get in here. He'll be stopped short. And they'll come up empty on the try for two. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. 
carries up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. On first and 10, Mayfield. Flushed out right. He's going to look deep now for left. And the defense loses him. It's complete. And all the way down to the 26. A big play that time for Cleveland. 46 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. So look at this. They'll go for a field goal now to get within a score. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So you knew one way or another that they needed the two scores. They get the easy one out of the way. Now they'll get the ball back, hopefully. Yeah, and the question is, how do you accomplish that? Do you onside kick it? Or since you have all three timeouts, do you kick it deep? To me, I'm playing field position all three timeouts. I kick it deep and try and pin him back there. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. They'll start the drive with Elliott, and he'll push his way forward to about the 32. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. As they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They go to Elliott again. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Again to Elliott. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They'll try and run this with Austin. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. Forty-one's the whip. 
A handoff to Smith. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Ten yards is the pickup there, and that should just about put a bow on this one. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Cowboys as we sign off and say so long from Arlington. to his right. Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. Picked off down at the 10. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the ball down the field. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to it. And here's another interception, the third of this first quarter. Picked off near the 32. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. This interception will go on the record of the quarterback. But as a receiver, you've got to understand where you're on the pitchers to get there. So after the sack, here's second and 14. Now Rivers. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Jeff Heath. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Cowboy defense has a touchdown. Now that was a beautiful play. A pick six. How would you punctuate something like that, partner? What, you mean with an exclamation mark? Exclamation mark, a big word. What would you do with the ampersand? I like it. Before the break as they come up first and goal. From the shotgun, Ryan flushed out right. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jordan Lewis. And a big turnover there. Is